and welcome to Fair Isle. Uh, we do a little special on food today. It's something that Emily and Clark's Adventures have put together. They've got a few uh, sailing channels from around the world to give their experiences, what it costs them, what they eat, that sort of thing. And uh, so we're going to give a view of, of what we've had so far. We started our journey in England, then we came down through Portugal, Spain and through the Med to end up here in Venice. So this is our food journey. It all began in England, the land of pork pies, cheddar cheese and pickled eggs. Really, I'm not joking, pickled eggs. This is the part where I tell you that one phone call from me and the Department of Health will be down here. You'll be shut down for 30 days, I guarantee it. Do you really want to do that to your boss? It's not like I'm asking you to cough up. Come on now. Got the other game. Tommy, point for the pretty boy, huh? Silly stomach. Oh. Thanks. As we sail along the south coast, we have some excellent meals in pubs. It's not just about the beer in most places nowadays. The food is also superb. And then came the time to try food from the regions, and that means the Cornish pasty. They're supposed to have these really thick crusts. They were originally, originally for Cornish timber, weren't they? Yeah. And they could hang on to the crust and eat the, eat the middle bit. Without, um... It's just an elaborate sandwich. Really. Oh, very nice. From England, we head south to Portugal, where the national dish is sardines. Mm. You can see why. We leave the dolphins to round up dinner while we head off with some sailing friends to taste port. Port is a fortified wine and comes in a range of colours from white to rosé and tawny and red. We try them all. <laughs> the crew that comes and has for breakfast port for breakfast. <laughs> and superbock. Yes. <laughs> superbock. Excellent. Uh, fresh orange and, juice. and the sardine sandwich, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm. very good. Is that really a sardine sandwich? Yeah, delicious. It is. Yeah, it's delicious. Good grief. <laughs> Excellent. Impressed. Of course, sailing also includes cooking on board. And when the boat is rocking, it's important to be secure in the kitchen. Cooking with hot fat on a moving boat is probably not recommended, but hey ho, do be careful. So that's that. There you go. Our friend Torve shows me round her galley. She sailed around the world in all kinds of weather conditions. Okay. And you know, it's very steady to stay here and work. You don't, you can put my back on and... And, uh, and it doesn't make you feel queasy to be down here in the no, storm? That's, no. That's really good. That's yeah. so handy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like being down below. When we arrive in Spain, it's wonderful paella, or tapas on the menu. An excellent way to eat and drink, and for the most part, the food is very cheap. Christmas in the marina in Cartagena is a combination of bring your own meals, I make sausage rolls, and a menu of fish or turkey as the main course. We eat al fresco in the sunshine. After that fantastic Christmas in Cartagena, we began our second season at sea in the Med, and I became a pescatarian. And I didn't. <laughs> but luckily, there are plenty of vegetables and fish to be had um, around that part of Spain, except that we almost immediately went into lockdown. Yeah, and that caused a lot of problems in itself. Uh, not getting food, because one of us could go out at a time just to get food, but gas. You've got to cook your food, and uh, we ran out of gas, running out of water as well, so it really caused us some issues. So a very successful trip for, for food, but I think the key is getting these. We didn't have any disposable barbecues, but basically we're going to make our own. We've got some tin trays. We can just put a, a, one of our grills over the top of that and hopefully cook all our meals on these now. For the next two weeks? For the next two weeks, that's be fine. We spend over three months in lockdown in the Mar Menor. It's very quiet, which I guess is what you'd expect. I have seen a couple of people, so there are still some people here. But it's pretty eerie. The 
The Spanish rules are quite strict, so we have just one spa shop that we can go to. But luckily for us, it is very well stocked. Hey, <laughs> very pleased. How lucky are we? Big grin. <laughs> yeah, full shelves. Biscuits and it's just like a normal day. Well, almost. The biggest problem we have is gas, or rather the lack of it. This leads to some valiant attempts on our part to adapt. Wow, that is really working. I have to admit, I wasn't sure this is going to work out, but actually that's probably going ooh, nicely. So, I mean, this is enough for a week. <laughs> I think I even did yeah, the vegetables. You've cooked for a whole marina. We can't <laughs> give this to anyone. We can't well, go in. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, and I wasn't sure, yes, well, how often we're going to be able to do this, because it is really windy. I yeah, mean, yeah. We're, it's just about protected here, but out yeah. here, look. It is a point, actually, because we're, you know, we want to, at some stage, get a barbecue on the stern rail, don't we? But in fact, in this, you couldn't use no, it. I couldn't light it. Really, I, had, no. I had difficulty lighting it here. But, but yeah. this is great. I mean, this is a really good plan. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit precarious. And we shouldn't really do a wide shot because we're sitting here in their pyjamas. I think half the world's in their pyjamas at the moment, though, so I think we'll get away with it. Yes. Uh, the oven gloves weren't as um, fireproof as you might expect. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm blown to pieces out here. <laughs> I really miss those oven gloves. Why, why people can't have the same standard across the world for, for gas and make life easier. Life, life easier for everyone surely because they can just make the same ones everywhere. Um, but if you remember when we came from Holland we had that regulator um, and that was no good when we got to England. It was a different bottle. Here they've got, I know in, we're gonna, I'm going to go to a petrol station and they do bottles like this I think of butane not of propane um, and they're, they're big ones, they're too big to go in here, which is why we haven't bothered buying them before, but that's the least of our worries now. So if I can get one of those bottles, as long as I've got a regulator that fits, because no shop will be open to sell regulators, it's just the garage that hopefully will be open to selling gas bottles. Hopefully one of these will do it. If it doesn't, I do have a pack of uh, connectors that I bought before we came out, uh, different gas fittings. So hopefully, in amongst all that lot, we'll get something that works. So are you worried? No, it'll all be fine. <laughs> Don't panic. Okay. One of the things we were able to do during lockdown and um, pretty much throughout our time living on a boat actually, um, was make smoothies. Now I've been using my Nutribullet for years um, and I brought it with me onto the boat. The good thing is that if you run out of things or if you have things left over or if you can't get things, which was the case when we were um, locked down, you can just mix up whatever you want. So this is a banana and spinach and a tangerine. Now the trick, I think, is a little bit of peel because that gives it a kick. And these are some sunflower seeds. And add water. All right, we have filtered water, which is very good. but It does take a lot of time though to come through. So. We might have to speed this bit up. <laughs> you fill it up to a maximum level. And the trick, I think, is actually not to put too many ingredients in. If you look at the um, brochure, it has food right up to the top. And I think it's better to have less. Make it a bit more watery. Otherwise it can get a bit chewy. Okay, there we are. So it's filled up to the line and you put the uh, this top on. And go for it. For about 10 seconds. 15 seconds. One, two, three. 15, roughly. Or 30. Or however long you want to mix it up for, really. And then there is your juice. And then, oh, can't get the lid off. <laughs> That's right, I always have to do this. <laughs> Can you get the lid off for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Good. And then we can pour it out and drink it. You can see it. Let me have a taste. There you go. Mmm. Tastes much better than it looks. <laughs> I, like, I like it when it's got some kick to it, though. What's yeah. it put to get kick? Is that the? It's the rind. All right, maybe more rind. 
More rind. Mm. Oh, okay. After lockdown, I just want to walk and climb, so that's what we decide to do. The wonderful beaches in Formentera, the hillside rambles in Ibiza, and the long days out exploring Mallorca. Then to the clearest water in Europe, in Sardinia. After four months of our own cooking, it is wonderful to find this lovely fish restaurant on the beach. In here, there's something on no foreign land. So. But this culinary story would not be complete without talking about Venice. And that means Aperol spritz. Aperol and Prosecco with a dash of soda water. <laughs> Aperol, my favorite. Perfect. We're looking forward now to spending more time in Venice and trying more Venetian food. Yep, and we'll be going uh, further east before we head out of the Med, so that's uh, Greece and, and Turkey, which is supposed to be the cheapest place for food actually in the Med, so we're, we're looking forward to, to seeing that and to seeing what the other channels come up with, where they are in the world and, uh, and what there is out there, because we'll be going there as well at some point. And maybe getting a better barbecue, possibly? Oh yeah, definitely getting a better barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.